Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm finally getting to the last part of the Magakind of Nurgle box set. In this case, two of them. I'm building two kits of Blight Lords. Now, one thing to note is when I, I've already assembled these, but this little tentacle guy here, apparently there's another bit where there's another tentacle that wraps around this horn. I accidentally missed that. And now with some Liquitex modeling putty, we're going to fill in the gaps and add some texture. These bugs, I, I make it so it looks like their flesh is rotting off, so with a little sponge, I apply this all over most of the flat areas to add some more character to it, as well as trying to fill up the mold lines and the uh, gaps in between. Now I did like about two to three coats of the putty inside the cracks. In some places it completely obscured it, in some places you could see through. It turns out that there's a good amount of shrinkage, so if you want to use this to fill in the cracks, you kind of have to overfill it a little bit, and then it'll look just fine afterwards. Now to prepare for painting, I built these a long time ago and assembled them on their stand, so I'm going to use a... I don't know what this is, and I'm going to remove them from their little stands, and then I'm going to prepare their place for painting. Now for painting, I'm going to use Bright Touch General Purpose Gray Car Primer. It's made for cars, but it has a really strong grip, and it can work well. And while I'm waiting for the models to dry, I'm going to take Liquitex Modeling Putty and I'm going to apply it all over the bases. I'm just going to brush it all on. And after it dries for a bit, I'm going to take a hair dryer to speed it up. Using a hair dryer will make the top dry a little bit, but the inside is still wet. So you have to be very careful, otherwise you'll like break the top crest. So then I pat it down flat to get rid of a lot of the brush strokes, and this makes like a natural mud wavy pattern. I will also then take a little sponge and just dab on to create some uh, not so smooth texture. And then with all the models primed, I then apply them into specific spots onto the bases where while the putty was still a little bit wet, and then it made indents so that these models will go seamlessly on. And now with Nagaroth, Knight, Loran Forest, Snarsenic Green, and Castellan Green, and Lamian Medium, we're going to paint the giant rot flies. We're going to take start off with Nagaroth Knight, and we're just going to apply this all over the body, the flesh part of the body of the rot flies. And once that is done, we will then airbrush Lauren Forest at a 50-60 degree angle. We cover pretty much 80% of the entire model in this. And then we take Snarsnick Green and dry brush all over the model here. And then with a one-to-one -one mix of Lauren Forest and Lamian Medium, I then spray painted pretty much 90% of the uh, model. The idea was to tie all things together, get the purple and the greens and everything to flow together to smooth it out so it wouldn't be too extreme. The problem was I the ratio was wrong. I should have done like one part Castellan Green and like 10 parts Lamian Medium with a little bit of water. Yeah, I messed that up. Uh, And now with Gulliman Flesh, we're going to apply this to a lot of the holes and open sores. This is to darken the skin and flesh of the area, so just do little feathery taps here and there just to fill in the crevices and to the surrounding skin. And once that is done, take your white paint of your choice, in my case White Scar, and then just apply it onto all the little maggots. They're a little hard to find, but they're around. They look like conch shells. We then apply Gulliman Flesh to the intestines sticking out, and then we then take watered down Skeleton Horde Contrast and apply it onto the maggots. And now with Bestigor Flesh and Fugan Orange, we're going to apply this to all of the boils. We're going to start off with a layer of Bestigor Flesh onto all the little boils everywhere. He has it on the outside and inside of his arms as well as the abdomen and around the neck and such. And once those are dry, we then take the Fugan Orange and then apply it all over these boils. And finally, once that has dried, we then go back with Best Score Flesh and apply a dot, covering like maybe eh, 60%, 50% of the little uh, boils uh, towards the upper raised areas. You be the judge.
And now with Pallid Witch Flesh, Kalidor Sky, and Rhinox Hide, we're going to paint the eyes. We're going to start off with a base layer of Pallid Witch Flesh all over the eyes. And then we're going to take Kalidor Sky and we're going to paint a round ball in it, or orb, for the pupil. And then we're going to take Rhinox Hide and then place the dot for the dark part of the eyes. And then with Magos Purple, we'll apply this all over the intestines. And once that is done, we're going to take Lamian Medium and we're going to apply this all over the eyeballs. We're going to coat the eyeballs in this and then we're going to take Magos Purple and we're going to do little taps into it. And the Magos Purple will flow in and create like veins. Now with Lauren Forest and Cadian Flesh Tone, we're gonna fix, or we're gonna paint these little parts of the flesh that are being torn. So with a one-to-one -one mix of Lauren Forest and Cadian Flesh Tone, we will start with a base layer on these pieces of flesh that are being pulled from the rot fly. We then paint a highlight with more Cadian Flesh Tone mixed into the mix. And once that is done, we take Gulliman Flesh and apply it all over to add some more flesh color. And then we take Magos Purple and apply it here and there into the cracks and recesses and the edges for more rot or bruising. And now with Baylor Brown and Xandri Dust, we're just going to paint the teeth. We're going to start off with Baylor Brown on all the teeth that are around there. And once that is done, we're going to take Xandri Dust and we're just going to apply a dot of it on the upper, more outer areas of the teeth. We will also be doing the same to their stingers. And now with Eshin Grey, Dawnstone, and Contrast Black Templar, we're going to paint the giant stone that some of them are on and their eyes. We'll start off with a layer of Eshin Grey onto the eyes and the stone. And once that is done, for the eyes, we'll apply Dawnstone on the more upper raised areas, like 90% of it. And then we will dry brush Dawnstone onto the stone. And then once that's done, we will take Black Templar Contrast Paint and apply it to the eyes. This was a bad idea. What you should have done is two layers of Nuln Oil. And now with Snarsnick Green and Magos Contrast Paint, what we're going to do is we're going to paint the tiny little flies that are on them. Uh, one of the models has two flies on the stone and between his legs. So we're going to coat it with Snarsnick Green at first, and once that dries, we will apply Magos Purple onto it. And once that dries, we're going to overbrush, which is similar to dry brushing, all over the ma uh, maggot. And then we apply a dot of Black Templar's Contrast onto their giant eyes. And then with Baylor Brown, we're going to paint their bases in just one simple coat. And then, once it dries, we will then use super glue and attach the models to the bases. We need them to be up on the bases so we can hold the bases for painting them now. And now with Mornfang Brown, Agrax Earthshade, XV88, but I don't actually use it, Xandri Dust, Skeleton Horde Contrast, and Gulliman Flesh, we're going to paint the entirety of the wings and chitin. I'm going to paint the wings and chitin uh, around the same time because the steps kind of overlap on each other when it's easiest to paint. So we're going to start off with a base layer of Mornfang Brown all over the chitin. And then once that's done, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and apply it all over the chitin including the ones on his, or his feet as well. And now we will take Xandri Dust and apply it all over the wings. 
both inside and out. We will use a thin, fine brush to get the parts closest to the body, and then we use a bigger brush towards the large parts of the wings. Now we're going to take some Lamian Medium, and with a 1 to 1 mix of Lamian and Skeleton Horde Contrast and maybe a drop of water, we apply this to around 2 thirds, maybe 3 fourths of the entirety of each wing. We then apply a second coat closer towards the Chitin, which is around like maybe 1 third to 2 fourths all the way through. Then with one part Gulliman to two parts Lamian, we then apply this as close to the Chitin as possible as a good transition color. And once that is done, we're then going to take Mournfing Brown and we're going to overbrush. This is close to dry brush, but not. We're going to overbrush onto all of the Chitin. And now with Steel Legion Drab, Doom Bull Brown, Agrax Earthshade, and Bane Blade Brown, we're going to paint the, the harness and the fur underneath. We're going to start with a layer of Steel Legion Drab all on the fur. And then once that's done, we're going to take Doomble Brown and we're going to paint the entirety of the, what is it, harness. And once that is done, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and apply it all over the harness and the fur. And once that is done, we're going to take Steel Legion Drab and we're going to overbrush all over the fur, the edges of it. And then with uh, Bane Blade Brown, which is the lightest color, we're going to do another final uh, overbrushing onto the very tips of this fur. And once that is done, we're going to take Doom Bull Brown and we're just going to paint on the upper raised areas of the seat and the main body of the seat as a highlight. And now with Caliban Burnt Green, we're going to paint the drops of poison coming out of the stingers. Now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte, we're going to airbrush this all over the model. Now we're going to bump things around as we paint and handle it a lot, so we need to preserve the airbrushing effect. As well as this looks really good with what it does to the chitin and to the wings. Makes the wings look like paper, makes the chitin look solid, and the flesh look dead. And now with Karak Stone, Skeleton Horde Contrast, Rackhearth Flesh, Gulliman Flesh, and Magos Purple, we're going to start painting the skin of the Blight Lords. We're going to start off with a layer of Karak Stone all throughout. And then once that's done, we're going to take some Lamian Medium, actually, and we're going to mix it one to one with the Skeleton Horde Contrast and a little bit of water. And we're just going to apply this all over to add a little bit of shading. And now with Karak Stone, we're going to go back and we're going to highlight 90 to 95% of the entire flesh. Don't forget the feet and the fingers. And we're just going to increase the colors. We're going to avoid the deepest, darkest recesses. We want uh, a good shadow in there. And 
And then with a one-to-one -one mix of Rackarth Flesh and Karak Stone, we're going to then highlight everything again, covering 75%, uh, maybe 80% of all the model. We're now going to add into the mix Lamian Medium and Plague Bear's Flesh into this process. Now, I've been batch painting all these models, but once we get to this, we really want to focus on them one at a time. We're going to do Skeleton Horde Contrast, Gulliman Flesh, Plague Bearer's Flesh, and Magos Purple, and we can dilute them with some Lamian Medium if it's too strong. What we're going to do is we're going to start adding in. We're going to start with Skeleton Horde, and we're going to apply this directly into some of the recesses and stuff. We want to darken them. And we're also going to apply this onto like bottom areas of the folding of the fat, just to show like some darkening of bruises. We'll then take Gulliman Flesh water down a little bit with a little bit of water and we're going to apply it to the open source like where there's giant holes that flesh or cuts or that giant mouth we're going to apply this close to it and then with magos purple we're going to apply this onto some of the tentacles that are growing up but most importantly is wherever there is like some bandage or armor attached to the flesh or some strap we're gonna apply magos purple on it and it's going to basically cover the sides of it and it's gonna make it look like the whatever the item is is digging into the skin making a bruise a small detail but a nice detail so now here's a trick I learned from Duncan we're going to take the Lamian medium, we're going to apply it around the mouth and all over the tentacle. And then once that is done, we're going to, then going to take our color, Magos Purple, and we're going to apply it all over. And it's going to create a very nice transition uh, flowing. I should have done this with the Skeleton Horde Contrast around the mouth. I got lazy, and it just makes it, it would have made it look better for the brown there. But, yeah. And then we're going to take Plague Bearer's Flesh, and we're going to apply it to places where it looks like tumors are growing out, all these little boils and stuff, we're going to paint them with uh, green instead of the best of gore flesh. It's going to be all over his tentacles and throughout his body, uh, places where mm, you can just add some more color here and there. It's I use this color as to express like rot or poison or something in their bodies. Okay, we're going to take some Xandri dust, and the giant mouth has teeth, so what we're going to do is we're going to coat them in Xandri dust, and upon their drying, we're going to take Skeleton Horde Contrast and apply it all over the teeth, and then we're going to go back and do one more layer of Xandri dust on the highlighted picked areas, like 80-90% to 90 of the teeth facing us. Now one thing of note is that some of the models have fungus growing on them. So to handle that, I just applied two layers of uh, Plague Bear's Contrast Flesh to make the mold color. And as well as the other guy with the big belly, I just applied colors there until it looked like his belly was dark, bruised, and just coming out or rotting open. Alright, with Lead Belcha, Nuln Oil, Agrax Earthshade, Skeleton Horde Contrast, Plague Bear's Flesh, and Rise of Rust, we're going to paint the metal paint all the metal pieces, the armor plates, the scythes, the chains, the metal chains that are hanging off of the, uh, what should we call it, the rot flies, we're going to paint them in lead belcher. Afterwards we'll apply a simple layer of non oil on all the metal pieces, including the chains. I then take Agrax Earthshade and then I apply it all over the metal pieces we've done.
And once those are done and dry, we then go back to lead belcher and we will dry brush all over all the metal pieces. We've been doing every single piece of metal on them. We will then take slightly watered down skeleton hoard contrast and apply it over every single metal piece. And now here's where we get a little fancy. We then take the plague bearer's flesh and apply it to random pieces of the metal armor. Now this is your choice. You can do them every other one or all of them and stuff because sometimes the armor may be green but this adds like a grimy green to it. And once that is done we apply riser rust into all the holes. What we do is we take a little bit on our brush and we just tap 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 it directly into the hole and when the and then we dry the brush a little bit on maybe a paper towel or something and then we just brush up and down along the sides to spread it out. And now with Castellan Green, Agrax Earthshade, and Lauren Forest, we're going to paint their robes. I wanted to try something different. So we're going to start off with a layer of Castellan Green on the robes, on, or the hoodies, as well as the uh, like cloth things over their legs. And once that is done, we will then apply a layer of Agrax Earthshade all over. Not a very thick layer, but enough that we can see the color and some lines build up. And once that is done, we will again go back with Castellan Green and paint 90-95% to 95 of the entire thing in it. Use your judgment. And then once that is done, we will then take Lauren Forest and mix it with Castellan Green on a 1 to 1, and then we will apply it to... 80 to 90 percent, maybe 75 percent is the lowest, depending on the area of each of the uh, robes. The robes over the legs, yeah, it was like close to 90 percent, but on the hoodie, yeah, like 75 to 85. And now with Pallid Witch Flesh, Agrax Earthshade, and Skeleton Horde Contrast, we're going to paint the staffs. Now we're going to start off by coating all the wood in Pallid Witch Flesh. Once that is done and very dry, we're going to apply Agrax Earthshade all over. And once that is dry, we'll apply a slightly watered down amount of Skeleton Horde Contrast all over. The Skeleton Horde Contrast makes a nice warm walnut color on wood. And now with Gullum and Flesh, we're going to apply this to various parts of the weapon. Just uh, tap 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 here and there where you think the blood would be. Because when blood is dry, it turns brown. And so this could show where there is dried blood on your weapons. And now with Karak Stone, Agrax Earthshade, and Rakarth Flesh, we are going to paint the giant horns that come out of the seats. We're going to start off with a layer of Karak Stone. And once that is dry, we will apply a simple layer of Agrax Earthshade all over it. Once that is done, we will overbrush carefully Karak Stone all over. It will pretty much cover everything except the deep dark recesses. And then once that is done, we will then take Rakarth Flesh and we will do a pretty much a dry brush but really an overbrush on the forward like 50% of the horn and maybe a little bit onto the inside of light dry brushing. And now with Black Templar Contrast Paint, we will paint the pot black which is completely obscured by the wing. I didn't notice it when I was painting it. And now with Mornfang Brown, we will then paint all the leather straps. Some have a few, some have almost none, and there's some on the feet, just FYI. And 
And then with Warplock Bronze and Balthazar Gold, we're going to paint these brass pieces on the giant horns in front. Now, basically, they're all going to be covered in Warplock Bronze, and then we're going to do a dry brush slash overbrush of Balthazar Gold on the very tipped ones, and like a few dabs on the edging of the parts of the rings that are in the middle, or the inside. I don't know how to describe it, just watch what I do. And then once again with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, we will then apply it all over the flesh of the guys, and the horns as well, as well as maybe the wood as well. Uh, just do not touch the metal with it, it'll ruin it. And now with Liquitex Gloss Varnish, we're then going to apply it onto every single boil, the eyes on the monster and the eyes on the side as well as the intestines and places that are essentially wet. And once that is done, we're going to take uh, Gulliman Flesh as an afterthought and we're just going to paint the mushrooms this. Not much thought into it. And then we're going to take some brown fake moss and we're going to use super glue and we're going to pat it down onto the base just to like add a little more to the big open space. And then with Vallejo Pigments Sombra Natural, we're going to apply it with water, or mix it with water, and just apply it all over the base. And then with Liquitex Matte Varnish, we're going to mix it with a little bit of water and then just apply it all over. Actually, I probably could have just mixed this in with the pigment powder itself so it flowed better and looked better, but eh, whatever. Also, the wings and the body get in the way. <laughs> Sorry. And now with Blood for the Blood God and Nurgle's Rot, we're going to apply the finishing touches. With Blood for the Blood God, we're going to apply it onto... I, I'm, the pot made it... I just want like blood tentacles coming out. And we're also going to apply it onto all the open holes on the Rot Fly and on the character. As well as we're going to apply little like streaks of it onto the blade. And basically we're just going to fill in holes with this. I then filled in the rest of the pot with the Nurgle's Rot, as well as there are these some little teardrops here and there of Nurgle's Rot that, well, like drops of something. I paint them Nurgle's Rot on the body. And you can use this to cover up mistakes or errors or issues on the body. You can just go around with the Blood for the Blood God and Nurgle's Rot to fix up little patches of things. I mean, it'll be fine. And then I also apply Nurgle's Rot while I'm in large patches all over the base. And pretty much done. I went back and fixed a few details because they're the thing with Blight Lords and Blight Kings is that they're such individuals that they have a lot of unique uh, bits and pieces to them that are different. So I had to go back and fix a couple of stuff. There was a lot of little maggots and stuff that I missed here and there. Now as well as this is two squads. This uh, took a while. <laughs> It should have been done a few days ago but these guys took a while. These guys have tons of detail packed in. It's ridiculous. And so I painted their bases two different colors. One squad, Mornfang Brown. The other squad, Rhinox Hide, to differentiate. But man, oh man. Well, I, overall, I know it's strange, but uh, this is my painting style. Somewhat realistic, not cartoony or stuff, but I feel like these guys are a little bit lackluster. But then again, like... I was painting these guys for so long that I was starting to get bored and I wanted to move on to the next project, so I didn't really go for making them pop. I could have done a few things to make them pop a little bit, but I can cl you can clearly distinctly see them across the board. You can see their weapons, you can see their bodies, you can or you can make out at a distance what each part of them is. So they are well painted enough that you can clearly and distinctly see differences. So that's objective. Um, I'm going to have to say, I feel, uh, honestly, it's, I don't know, for some reason I'm just not liking them too much. I, I'm going to round up and I'm going to say a 7 out of 10. I gave these guys a solid 7 out of 10 with everything done. I don't know, it's just, it doesn't feel... Yeah, it just feels a little messy. Like, I don't know. I can't really place it, but they just don't pop. Hmm. Well, anyway, 
Thanks to a commenter for, I guess, saying, there was one commenter who said that he uh, got one of these box sets for Christmas and was going to paint them up and this was the only model kit in it that I have not actually had on my channel yet. So I thought, you know what? That'll work. I'll do this right away. Alright, moving on. I have tons of Nurgle and tons of other stuff to paint, but my next project is a project near and dear to me because I haven't played a game of Age of Sigmar in a few months. And now I'll finally be able to, and I'll finish my new project, where I'm making my own custom dice. And that'll be my next project, and I'll move on that immediately. So, leave a comment if you want to comment, like the video if you like the video, share it if you want to share it with anyone or who may need it. Subscribe for more, more will come, but next, I'm making my own dice, and I'll see you then.